Hello everyone, by Luca Mazzucchelli. Today, a special episode of my video interviews with two amazing guests. You already know the first one because he was the protagonist of one of my most successful videos. Diego Ingrassia, founder of ANG Management and leading expert in Italy on the topic of emotions. Ciao, Diego. Ciao, Luca. And uh, the second guest is a psychologist uh, who began his career 57 years ago uh, is a living legend of psychology. He was included by Time magazine among the 100 most influential people in the world. Diego, how can I introduce our guest tonight? Please help me. You can't, Luca. Uh, I don't think that uh, Paul needs any presentation, uh, but uh, I, he's so nice that he's sharing with us his den. His apartment in San Francisco, we are here, and uh, I want to thank him uh, for his special relationship uh, and the privilege that he is uh, uh, giving to me to be here with him. Thank you. My pleasure. My only regret is that I'm not in Italy. Grazie, <laughs> grazie. Thank you very much, Paul Ekman. First question, let's start with the question for Paul. Paul, when did you fall in love and why you are still in love with psychology? after so many years dedicated to this science? Well, I first got interested in psychology, gee, when I was about 16 years old. I started college when I was 15, uh, and uh, I read some papers by Freud, and they got me very interested, not only in understanding myself, but in understanding other people, and I decided I would become a psychologist so I could continue that work. I originally intended to be a psychotherapist, uh, not to be a uh, psychological researcher. Diego, how did you meet Paul Ekman and uh, felt in love with his emotional behavioral analysis? We started many years ago uh, with managers to develop uh, their uh, skills on a relationship uh, and their managing managing the skills uh, and we realized uh, very very uh, soon and that the most successful uh, in the business but also in the private life uh, were who had an uh, high capacity to manage their emotion when i met paul in, in 2011 uh, uh, i was impressed about his method and uh, because he gave us uh, um, a scientific observation elements uh, to read emotion in others but most of all, I understood the one important thing, that uh, uh, to manage uh, other emotion, first uh, you need to manage uh, your emotion, you need to understand better your, your own emotion, and, um, and then you can be able to manage uh, the others. So the method uh, is very useful for who has to develop their awareness, and that's why uh, the, there is a, a high interest uh, for many psychologists and psychiatric also. Paul, what is the secret for psychologists to produce a change in the therapeutic process or inside an organization? Well, I think the first step is to establish an emotional connection with the person you're talking to. And uh, that means that the, you are aware of their emotions, you're aware of your own emotional reactions to that person, so that they don't filter the information you're getting and that you convey a sincere interest in understanding and responding to the other person. We all have a story we would like to tell if we could only find someone who would really listen. Diego, when I met you, I was impressed about your scientific approach and also that many people of ANG management comes from the academic environment. The question, Diego, is why did you choose to have this approach in your organization? When we start to teach about emotion and nonverbal communication, actually I was speaking with Paul uh, a few minutes ago, many people that delivered this content uh, had like a, na a naive approach. Uh, no? uh, they claim to be an expert because uh, uh, they participated of two days seminar uh, and uh, in Italy uh, we are uh, far behind uh, compared to other countries of course uh, regarding uh, scientific research on emotional skills. Uh, I come often to America to update my skills and to research uh, 
uh, what's new on this topic, uh, um, because America is very uh, further than us. And for example, indeed, in the United States a few years ago, they introduced emotional education in the elementary school. This year, we start the first time in Italy a pilot project to introduce the emotion education inside the school and we hope that the Ministry of Education start to introduce in the school as a master of education. So the quality knowledge and the scientific approach will help us to develop a healthy relationship and of course be more effectiveness in our daily life. Paul, regarding the emotion education in the elementary school that Diego was mentioning. In September in Italy, we come the movie Inside Out from Disney Pixar. What was your contribution to the movie and how start your collaboration with Pixar? The director of the movie, uh, Pete Doctor, uh, I've known for a number of years and I've admired his other films. Uh, Up is another of his films. Uh, he did both versions of Toy Story. And uh, when he did Toy Story, he first found my work. And soon after that, uh, we met and we've had a very cordial relationship. Now, I was just looking through my files and I found the correspondence with him uh, about four years ago where he said, to me in a letter, uh, I want to do a movie about emotion. And here are the emotions I want to feature. Can you spend a few days telling us everything you know about those emotions? And so that's what I did. I went to the Pixar studio and I spent a few days uh, briefing them, telling them everything I knew about each of the five emotions that the film featured. And uh, but I never saw the script. They were very secretive about their scripts. So it was preparing them ahead of time. And now I'm writing a uh, critique of the film that will, because they got many things right, but they got many things wrong. And, uh, but it puts emotion on the map and it raises it, um, the issue. And it makes it easy for parents or teachers to talk about emotions with children, because they can refer to events in the film. So I'm writing a parents and teachers guide to the film on how you can use this in your family and how you can use it in the classroom. So we will use this uh, for uh, the Ministry of Education in Italy. Uh, good, very good. <laughs> Pixar knows that I'm doing it, and uh, I will of course show it to them um, before I make it public. I hope it'll go on their website. It'll certainly go on my website. Diego, why emotions years by years became always more important for our society? I, I think that um, starting uh, with the change of uh, communication skills that we have. For example, um, we, we change our communication skill uh, um, regarding all the following uh, the social network and uh, revolution. Uh, we have less time to build a solid and genuine relationship in this environment. So we understand that the cognitive approach itself and intellective quotient are not enough without a solid emotional skills. Well, Paul, I remember that in your book you said that emotions are so important but we know so less no, about emotion. How come? <laughs> well, I've just finished uh, a survey of emotional researchers. And uh, it'll be published in a uh, American Psychological Association journal called Perspectives in Psychology. It'll be out in the fall. Uh, and the first thing I did was to identify people who are actively doing uh, quantitative research on emotion. I left out the qualitative people and focused just on those who use quantitative methods. Uh, to my surprise, using criteria of frequent publications that have the word emotion in it, or the name of a particular emotion, there are 248 people worldwide studying emotion. That's a lot of people. The last time I did such a survey in 1994, there were 26. So it's a huge <laughs> wow. growth. 
And what I found was a lot of agreement uh, among them about some of the principal issues. And just by a lucky coincidence, the five emotions that over 75% of scientists think have been very well established by the evidence are the same five emotions that Pixar deals with in the film. They didn't know this ahead of time because I hadn't done the study, but it just, they, they picked the right ones. That is, that there's convincing evidence for. Now, of course, other emotions for which the evidence is not yet convincing, that's just an invitation to scientists to do more research. Because there are, I'm sure myself, that there are many more than five emotions, but those are the ones that have been solidly established by the research evidence and that virtually all scientists, at least three-fourths, think the evidence is compelling. Paul, how do you imagine psychology in the next 20 years? <laughs> the main thing, I think, in terms of emotion is that we won't have five, we'll have about 15 to 20 emotions that there'll be compelling evidence for. Uh, and all of those will be emotions. Some of them are not named in every culture. So for example, in English, we do not name the pleasure you f feel when you hear that someone you dislike has had a misfortune. The Germans name it, it's called Schadenfreude. That doesn't mean we the fact that we don't have a name for it doesn't mean that we don't experience it. It just hasn't been named in the language. Now, I'm providing a glossary uh, of all the words in the English language that describe a specific emotion. There are quite a few, but they're organized into these five global categories. Uh, and I'll be very eager to see scientists in other languages look at, you know, I mean, the dictionary is not the final word. It's just the final word on what's gone into the dictionary. But we, the issue really is, what do human beings feel? What do they experience? What's different one from another? What's universal to our species? Right now, in terms of strong evidence, only five. 20 years from now, 15 to 20. Uh, why, uh, why do you think that new generation of psychologists has to add uh, to their skills uh, the emotional skills and competencies? Because emotion uh, and the way how we show emotion um, uh, is a different language, Luca. Uh, it's a new different language and the Paul Ekman methodology uh, represent the alphabet of this language. So uh, emotion influences our memory, our learning process, our decision, our relationship, our therapy also for, as, a, as a psychologist. So everything in our life uh, is influenced by emotion. Sometimes uh, when we try to understand emotion, uh, we make some uh, orthographical error and uh, many times uh, we misunderstand the uh, emotion of others. So, we, uh, if we have the appropriate information, we will be able to ask and investigate better uh, the emotion of other people and, of course, obtain also more results on helping people and increase our professionalism as a prof uh, professional, as a psychologist also. Emotions act as a filter on your understanding of other people. So if I'm in a uh, fearful state, I will not accurately read the emotions of other people. They'll all be filtered by my own emotion unless I'm aware of that emotion. So self-awareness is the first and crucial step. Awareness of what it is I'm feeling, why I'm feeling it, and how I cannot have it interfere with my ability to understand another person. Diego, the Paul Ekman group that you represent in Italy developed a, a huge amount of studies on emotions and uh, non-verbal communication that are known all over the world. What's next? 
Um, you are asking me about the Paul Ekman group, who was next, yes. but uh, I think that the research, as Paul uh, is, uh, is, uh, is telling you, is always going on. Uh, that we are developing uh, new instruments to help people uh, to train, like for example, our train uh, that you can find in the Paul Ekman uh, website. Uh, but it's not enough, uh, all these the instruments, or um, without a specific training, you know. So, uh, our new challenge is, uh, look at, to let people understand the difference between uh, science and entertainment. Uh, more easy to think, uh, that, and also to say, that is a, is a, a gesture or an expression has a specific meaning, uh, instead of, of learning uh, what's behind the science. Uh, so, I think uh, this type of approach, uh, the type of approach that uh, you connect uh, one meaning uh, within one gesture, uh, can help you to misinterpret uh, very often uh, the emotion of other people. So, our goal uh, for the future is that this subject uh, will become part of the studies of our students, uh, as I said before, but also for professionalism, of course, uh, uh, even in the, in the educational program, uh, in the psychologist uh, with uh, a scientific approach uh, with a high quality training. Last question, I promise, Paul, last question. Could you please leave a suggestion that you would like to pass on to the new generation of psychologists? Oh, this is a good point to mention that there is a, another Dr. Ekman, a young pretty one, my daughter Eve Ekman, who is now at the same university UCSF, and she has taken the next step in applying my work to the problem of burnout, where people who start out in a profession uh, because of their wish to help people uh, lose that emotional empathy. It's very common. She did her doctoral dissertation at Berkeley on prison guards. Uh, she's now working with pediatricians who work with children who have cancer. There's burnout in many fields and she's developing both remedies to burnout and prevention of burnout. And that's sort of a next step beyond what I myself envision. So I'm delighted to have the young Dr. Ekman doing that work. Paul, Diego, really thank you very much for your time today and uh, I hope to see you soon in San Francisco maybe or in Italy. I hope both will happen. We have a beautiful city here and you have so many beautiful cities in Italy. I hope I can get there next spring, health permitting. This is a, a, a big news, Luca. Next spring, sir, maybe Paul Ekman is in Italy. I certainly hope so. There's a promise. <laughs> Fantastico. Grazie. Ciao, Ciao Diego. Ciao, Ciao Luca, grazie a te.